This segment explores the concept of cultural humility. What is cultural humility? How is it different than cultural competence? Cultural competence emphasizes a knowledge of other populations and a set of finite skills. Cultural humility, on the other hand, is about an ongoing process that we engage in. Cultural humility is really a process of self-reflection and self-critique, taking a learner's stance and seeking to address and redress structural inequality. Our goal in employing a stance of cultural humility is to position ourselves not as experts, but as people interested in learning and understanding. It's really about being curious and acknowledging difference. We spoke to a variety of people for their perspective on cultural humility. Stephanie Vroman Goodrick is a social worker who spent time abroad in Macedonia with the Peace Corps. She also completed her social work field placement abroad. Stephanie elaborates on the distinction between cultural competence and cultural humility. When I was in school, cultural competency was pushed a lot and there were books that we were given to study up on different cultures and groups so that we could have a better understanding when we were working with people. And while I, I think that there's value to that as well in having background information about cultures, this idea of cultural humility is really neat to me because it kind of forces the social worker to step back and think this person is the expert on their culture and there's so many subgroups within cultures and what I may think of their culture may be very different from how they identify with it. So really stepping back and making the client the expert and asking them about their background and how, how they see their culture is going to be important and having some of that background knowledge is good as well so you're familiar with things but I think culture humility is a good direction for social workers to take because it really puts the client in the position of expert. We asked UB School of Social Work professor Kathleen Cost about the role cultural humility plays in practice. Dr. Cost's latest research focuses on community development initiatives in Tanzania and she has supervised MSW students who have had placements abroad. Here, she talks with Laura Lewis, Assistant Dean for Global Partnerships and Director of Field Education. Dr. Cost had the following to say about cultural humility in the context of a field placement. If we're going to be culturally competent with the people we provide services to or that we want to work with out in the community, we have to be able to be silent to their stories. <laughs> you know, there has to be that sense of, well, we don't, you know, maybe we don't have all the answers. And to me, that's what cultural humility is. It's allowing those opportunities to search for those answers, to ask some questions that maybe the individual has never asked before. It really is interesting. I think students so often want um, you know, want to be able to do something and the idea of sitting with, um, you know, it's that piece about ambiguity too and not knowing. It's very uncomfortable anyway for students, um, but to sort of convince them that it's actually a strength, you know, I've come to talk to them about it as just, you know, be, how important it is just to be present mm -hmm. like you know you mm -hmm. don't have to go into field knowing a lot but can you be present can you really be present because that will make such a difference mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's sort of the same kind of thing how do you teach someone to take a not knowing stance well and just to be curious so it's uncomfortable for us to not have an answer to not be able to fix it you know and and so that idea of being curious to, so what is that about for them? If we're going to be present to somebody, we have to be genuine, right? So that means we have to be, we also then have to be curious about it. But we have to, to what is that phrase, lean into the discomfort. We have to be able to be vulnerable. One has to be humble. We have to acknowledge that we may not be as skilled as we think we are. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But that takes a constant insight and reflection and time on the part of whoever the practitioner is. Razak Nzor, 
currently an advanced year student in the MSW program, adds another perspective. A political science major, Roz comes from Kumasi, Ghana, and lived in the Bronx before coming to Buffalo. He has experience with rural communities in Ghana and refugee children and adolescents in Buffalo. I asked Raz how cultural humility applies to his practice as a social worker. My understanding of cultural humility has to do with a lifetime commitment to delivering services to people that are different from where you come from, different from the background that you have, not letting anything stop you from delivering services to you. Having that knowledge alone, audience, I may kind of say you can make impact in the lives of people. But humility, you understand the affection of people, that is when I think you can really make impact. So it comes down to the individual. I mean, you can't force the, 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 someone to you know, do what is not part of him or her. Some people always preach about, I mean, preach against racism, preach against all these diversity issues. But in, in, I mean, inside them, you don't see them kind of standing for it as they're supposed to. So how come you have this idea? I mean, you are culturally competent. You have this all facts and figures. You know the the pros and cons of these kind of things. But how come we still having them in our societies? And I think it comes down to the person. Annie Bruns is an advanced year MSW student focusing on gender, sex education, and policy change. In talking about her time living abroad. She reminds us that it's important to work collaboratively with communities. Having lived in other countries and, um, you know, day-to-day -day life and just that things are very different and you can't really take things for granted or when you do, sometimes that comes back to haunt you and you get yourself mixed up in all of these things. And so I, um, I think those are things that I try to think about when working with, you know, different populations that I'm not... Sure, I know what that situation is like somewhere else, and so on some level I can empathize with what some of those things might be, but also that I'm not, I'm not that person, I'm not, you know, I don't come from a lot of these different communities that I do work with, and just that it's important that they have their own voice and that they feel like that is something that's, that's heard. An important point to make is that we can never make assumptions about people. Here is Stephanie again. You know, it takes time for people to trust you and really feel like you understand them. I think it was interesting because as I'm making friends and building relationships in Macedonia, I have some of the things from my cultural classes in the back of my mind. Right. But when I would ask a friend about that, they would laugh and say, I don't identify with that. That's not me. That's, that's something that's traditional in my culture, but that's not something I believe in or I practice or I agree with. So it's important to not make assumptions and to always mm -hmm. ask somebody how they identify and how they see themselves and how their their experience was growing up and how they perceive themselves now. So I think that's been really important. And I think it's good when somebody asks me, you know, are you familiar with this ball? And, you know, it's good to have background knowledge of some of what people are talking about, but then to also say, yeah, I'm familiar with it, but tell me what that means to you or tell me what, what that experience has meant to you. So it really is stepping away from this notion of social worker as expert. I think it's foolish to ever think that you know everything about a certain culture. I think <laughs> it's really important to really just make the client the expert, as we've been saying. We each have many stories about ourselves and the people around us. Sometimes we include other people in our stories as part of how we identify ourselves. We have a story about how we learned to perceive differences and how to understand our own cultures and contexts. When we interact or engage with someone, we are bringing our stories to the situation, which can affect how we understand one another. Cultural humility is about connecting the dots between our experiences, listening to our own narrative, and tuning in to what might have shaped our story and those around us. Cultural humility teaches us that the story is still being written through shared knowledge and experience, and none of us will have the whole story on our own. None of these moments can really bring us to a place where we have things all figured out, and yet they serve as guides for future thought and action. This is why personal reflection is so important when we think about cultural humility. Does it just happen? Yes and no. There is an element of intentionally thinking of ourselves as learners, which takes away the pressure to have everything figured out. As lifelong learners, we are saying that our story isn't finished yet, and there are so many that we have to hear and share in along the way. 
When we think about cultural humility and social work, there is confluence with a human rights-based approach. At the UB School of Social Work, we explore social work practice using a framework that is based on human rights and a trauma-informed perspective. These modes are already client-focused and empowerment-oriented. Cultural humility also contributes an important piece in describing the worker's role and attitude towards the client system. Cultural humility must be integrated in frameworks for social work service delivery and interventions with clients at all levels of practice. What does this look like? It could be through reducing power differentials in relationship between client and provider. It emphasizes client strengths, and cultural humility frames the relationship as cooperative and co-learning between the provider and the client. Considering a reflective, narrative approach to cultural humility impacts our knowledge, social work skills, and attitude as workers. We are taking part in a broader historical shift within the field of social work and welfare policy. Our knowledge of this history and the systemic elements of our society help us to acknowledge oppressive realities and traumatic experiences of individuals and groups. Our skills can be developed using methods and interventions that emphasize the client's power and expertise in ways that help workers frame the relationship in a respectful and empowering way. Our attitudes can reflect where we are located along our storyline. Perhaps we are beginning the work of acknowledging our own privilege, or maybe we have lived through some experiences that shape our approach to addressing inequalities. Sometimes, hearing someone else's story can have an impact on how we perceive their circumstances and our own role in helping. Mm -hmm.